Hello YouTube viewers and welcome to uh, a little session here on the Backman Class 105 DMU in blue. I've done some modifications to this. Uh, basically, um, I think it was at the end of last year, beginning of this year, I dropped my other DMU and got two new body shells um, for the DMU. Then I found out I could repair the old DMU and it looks fine. So I ended up with some more chassis as well uh, for the DMU and some spare um, body shells. So what I did when it, the other one broke, I thought it was broken for good. I didn't replace just the body shell, I bought a whole new unit. And what I've done, I'll swap the body shells over. For the new unit, so I've got now two brand new body shells, uh, the re sort of plated over type to sell on eBay. So what I've done here, as my layout is sort of mid 70s to early 80s, I've done a few modifications. I'll show later in this video what I've done to fit a sound chip uh, in here. I've basically got the Lego Biffo Man version 4 105 DMU sound chip which I'll demonstrate very shortly just point out a few things what I've done here at the front just push this back a bit I've actually um, painted over the old head code that came with these because a lot of them were uh, plated over eventually and uh, so the period I'm, I'm using this is the mid 70s to the 80s so <clears throat> I've sort of plated over that by painting it it's had a number B4 on there and um, slightly different to the other DMU just take around this is the other Backman 105 DMU you see the front's there has been flushly done these came out later and they've got a, a twin exhaust in the middle there Whereas this DMU, the exhaust ports, the early ones, they're still running in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. The exhaust was in here, near the guards van, and here as well. So they didn't have the twin exhaust here, they had the little exhaust coming through there. Done a bit of research on this. Uh, so done a bit of research, <coughs> and um, these units were full of asbestos. Uh, not the models, obviously, the real ones. And um, there's not many preserved, I think there's about four. I'd like to see one, actually. But uh, this is one of the early batches that was modified. So that's what I've done, basically. And I'll run you through this. Okay, this is the Backman 105 body frame. I've added these little passengers to the seats. Let's turn this around. Uh, they're quite cheap ones, these from China, and I've glued them in to the seats there, just trying to space it out, a few empty seats there. And uh, if you do this, make sure it's good strong glue in here. Right, so what I've done, I've put in here a version 4 uh, Lego Biffo Man. Sound chip now the chips now are getting smaller, which is good. The only problem with this the chip is just pull that back connected uh, at an eight pin fitting at the back. This is eight pin, as I said, it didn't seem to stretch all the way down to the seating. Now I've got this big block here, which is a weight, and there's no room inside there. I've taken the block off, there's no room where the motor is really to hide the chip. Uh, also the speaker, I've left it in the what you call a chamber or cup. I've cut away the seats here to house the chamber and stuck this down with blue tack. Uh, what I've done, I've come across these body shells from Bikeman. These are on uh, eBay uh, going second hand so I've bought these. Uh, they, they, these are the older version of the DMU. So I'm doing the 1970s late, or mid 70s, so to say, to early 80s. 
So I've actually painted the front here to blank the head code out and supplied uh, the paints from Rail Match. I could do it a bit slightly toned down, might tone that down slightly a little bit more. So inside here, so I can get a good fitting on the chip, I've taken away the uh, glazing here where the lighting is because it doesn't stretch this far back because of the weight uh, in the body there. So it's naturally illuminated anyway, but there's no room for the chip anywhere else. It's impossible to fit that without stripping the wires off, which I don't want to do because I'm not ruining it. So I've taken out the PCB board, which had nothing on there as a blank, this end, and the glazing. So I've left the glazing in the front here for the lights, etc., because there's a bulb in there. And that side as well. So a bit of modif modifications going on there. So it took quite a while to do this, actually. And um, fitted back in there the cab housing. And I put a driver in here as well, which I had to spare. A little guy just leaning on the window there, little driver. So I've glued him in as well. So all I've got to do now is attach the body the driver's side. This is the passenger trailer vehicle. Again I've glued some passengers in here. This also requires an 8 pin chip. It's a uh, just standard 8 pin DCC decoder from Hornby. Again 8 pin just fitted in the back. Uh, just fitted that around and stuck a little blue tack, well, sorry blue tack, black tack where the wires are. There's a little house in there for the chip. So it just covers that up basically. So again, just need to fit the body shell there. Okay, I'll just take you through uh, the sound chip, which is by Lego Biffo Man, which I've not really bought for any of these locos at the moment, so I'm quite impressed with this. Um, it's a version, version 4 model, um, 8 pin, and it's got sort of about 17 or 16 functions on here I'll basically take you through it so obviously we've got the running lights and the interior lights which have just come on there so at the back end obviously they've got red lights at the back I'll start the engines this is based on the 105 um, Leyland engines so I'll just start that up I say you can go either way. And those. And then you've got playable forms. So you've got function two here, which is the high notes, and the mid note number three. You can play around with those. Then you've got number four buffering up. And then you've got the um, number five brake application release. Number six is the doors shutting, slam doors. You can play around with that as well. Um, this is a function I really like. It's a bit different, this one. So get ready for this. This is number... It says in the, it's the bread sheet here, number 7. It's actually number 8, function 8. It's a toilet flush. Which I shouldn't do in the station. Dirty boy. But there you go. I'm quite impressed with that. I'll do that again. So that's a toilet flushing. Number 10, you've got the dispatch guard whistle. Do that one again. And number 11, you've got the buzzer for the conductor. And 
Number 12 says unused. I don't think there's anything on there. No. But number 14 is handbrake on. I can't hear anything there, so perhaps it's number 15. Which is a bell set type sound. Number 14 is that. There's nothing there, but. I'm not sure what that is. Um, then you go to number 16, which just says it's unused. That's a handbrake, apparently. So uh, the sheet's not in sync to what it is, but there you have it. We've got another handbrake there, number 17. So, we'll set her off. Just show you this function F18 are little detonators on the track. Here we go. Apparently, that's to warn the track maintenance people. The flanging effects on the wheels are very good on this. This is function number nine. It adjusts with the speed as well, which is quite interesting. Just bring it through this at a slow, slow pace. Speed up a tad. Mm-hmm. 